So today I'm going to try, I, although I say is um, Dutch art collection, I, I was going to focus on the borough collection where I work, where we have the largest holding of um, the Hague School paintings. But I've made some slides. This is very informal. I'm just going to go through some stuff that I like and some, some of my research and basically introduce you guys to something new if you've not heard of it. And if it's something you're aware of, then just share my enthusiasm for it. So that's me. The, the reason why that picture is there is because I love Rembrandt. <laughs> um, I really love Rembrandt. I actually really love him because he is incredible as an artist. And there's a misconception that people have of Rembrandt. That he's this really old guy with a big nose. And he collected costumes and armor with the feathered things. He's a lot more than that. He was trained in religious um, etchings and engravings. And he went to the Latin school. and he had incredible, he has done incredible paintings in his life, much more than his self portraits. So, and that was my very first talk at the Borough Collection um, on Rembrandt's self portrait, which we have at the Borough Collection in Glasgow Museums. It's one of the 39 pieces to have been authenticated by the Rijksmuseum, and it's from 1632. And that's when he decided to move from Leiden to Amsterdam to become a portraiture artist. And he had no money and no connections and no contacts. He was a young 26 year old that loved something and believed in that he would make an amazing um, portraiture artist. But that was the first painting he did when he landed in Amsterdam in 1632. He brought, borrowed the clothes and everything else from other people and he didn't even own anything. And to me, that portraiture, that painting is a painting of hope, of someone believing him in himself in the 17th century. And even now, we all have the same concerns. We want people to believe in us. We're trying to make something of ourselves. So that was one of my, that is one of my favorite uh, paintings in the Borough Collection in Glasgow Museums. I once stood um, near it and said, one day I would become an art historian and I would study Dutch art and I would talk about that. Um, painting and everyone laughed at me. It was a long time ago. And then I made that dream come true. Um, and it was a very big moment for me. So that's th this is a moment where I will never forget in my life. Anyway, let's go on. Um, the next one, please. Um, so under Glasgow Museums, the Dutch art comes under this banner. So there's a lot of information on the slides, but if I don't go through every single one of them, it's just there for you guys to read. Or for reference, I can share this with whoever wanted afterwards. But within Glasgow Museums, Dutch art sits under the banner of Dutch, Flemish and German art. And as, like it says here, we have over 500 paintings of Dutch art, Flemish and German art. Um, and they date broadly from 1450 to 1960. Um, so it covers Netherlands, uh, Belgium and Germany. and my predominant interest is in Dutch art. And remember, it was part of the colony, so it kind of broke up. So now what we have, Belgium, is also, it was part of the Netherlands, like the, before it broke up under the Spanish rule. So that just gives you a little bit of context. And the 19th century um, Hague School is what, is one of my main research things that I've done. So the Hague School painters are painters that came from Den Haag in, the Netherlands, and they were a group of painters that lived in and around Den Haag, and they painted these village scenes and these fishermen lives, and they had a specific style of painting. And they were inspired by the Barbizon school, the French school, and they painted very kind of grayish tone colors and everyday life. And that's something that we have the largest holding of um, the 19th century. And that's something I'm going to get into later on. But that's important to me because I've done a few of my research talks on the Hague skill painters, the, the 19th century ones, and a lot of them are on display. And we have the largest holding in Glasgow museums. Right. So the next bit is the Dutch art from 1600 to 1730. So we have 191 Dutch paintings um, in our Glasgow Museum's collections. And we have 
a lot of paintings there from different eras. So everyone's heard of the golden age of Dutch art, the 17th century. So people like Rembrandt, Jacob van Ruysdael that did beautiful landscapes, Dutch um, landscapes, and all these other artists. Some of them I'm not familiar with, I've not researched them, but the main ones I have. Um, there are many categories that are represented in the paintings. So for example, landscapes, seascapes, there's a lot of churches. Dutch art is very versatile. Um, there's portraiture, there's religious subjects. Um, I particularly like the landscapes and I really like the seascapes. But I also really like Dutch still life. And I think that the reason for that is because I love cooking and I love eating and I love food and table decorating. And I found a lot of that in Dutch still life, especially with the beautiful fruits and um, exotic things and ceramics and porcelain, which I'll show you a little bit later on. Um, and it says here, so the Republic of the Seven United Provinces, so the Dutch Republic, so now what does the Netherlands before it was a bit bigger, it broke up and it became Belgium and everything else. A little bit of geography. Next. So the Hague School paintings, um, we have a collection of over 130 paintings and watercolors by the Hague School. And this is an internationally significant collection. And the reason for that is I believe it's the largest one outside the Netherlands. So um, artists like Joseph Israels, um, Mathis Maris, Anton Mauve, um, Johannes Bosboom, and these are all, we have paintings of all of these people. Um, Mathis Maris and Anton Mauve are quite important because um, my last research talk at the borough was on Anton Mauve's painting Sreveninger, which I'm going to show you a little bit later on. And that's an important painting because I'm quite familiar with that landscape and that beach and that uh, geographically that place. So I have lots of memories of it and I quite like Anton Mauve as a painter. And Maris is very important because we have the largest collection of Maris works um, after the Netherlands and over half of the Hague School paintings that we have in our collections is of Mathis Maris. He was also Sir William's favourite artist and he was inspired by the Pre-Raphaelites and painted these incredible dreamy scapes. Um, I'll see if I can show you guys, um, you know, some of it later on. So this is um, Sreveninger that I mentioned by Anton Mauve. It's not a very good painting. You can't see it very well, but it's on Google. And, that, and the reason why I've put it on the slide is because he is one of the Hague School painters and my last research talk at the borough was on Anton Mauve's painting, this one. And this is a very important painting because although these are the details of the painting and anybody can look it up, um, it's, it's a very large painting, incredibly huge, and it's a lot of people miss it because when you're walking to, through the central galleries, it's right at the top. So I wanted to put it here in case you're at the borough and you're going through the central galleries. It's very easily missed because it's literally, it's not on eye level, it's right at the top. And I love this beach. Skaveninga is one of my favorite places. I go and hang out there. It's in Den Haag, The Hague, and I love the city. And that's um, a beach I have very fond memories of with many things. So I. I always say to people, if you've not been to Den Haag, if you've not been to uh, Scheveninger Beach, please go. This is a little scene from a very long time ago, 1874. I'm gonna quickly do a quick visual analysis. This is not a very good picture, but if you saw it, this boat is coming on shore and it's about to get ready to get pulled by these horses. And this is a boat that would not carry people, it would carry coal and goods and things that would come on, on shore and it's a very beautiful painting and you can't see that the slides don't do it justice but the colors of the painting are incredibly relaxing and calming and beautiful and the the muted colors of the sky and the creamy caramel of the sand and the way that the detailing of this painting if you looked at it this is very reminiscent of a Hague skill painting 
And if you are ever at the Borough Collection in the central galleries and you're going through uh, the first room into the little bit um, and then turning to the left, this is right at the top. Please have a look at it and don't miss it. It's one of my favorites. And this is another painting, um, a Dutch painting that I've put here deliberately. Again, you can't see it very well. I would Google that painting. It's really good resolution online. This is Mathis Maris's Butterflies. The reason why I've put this on the slide is because we're very lucky in Scotland to have this painting. This is a very important painting and the Rijksmuseum wanted this painting and they can't because Sir William bought it for us in Scotland. And this was the feature piece um, of the Rijksmuseum Mathis Maris exhibition in 2017. And a lot of the works that they borrowed from us, um, over half of their works was from us. And this was their feature piece. And this is a very beautiful piece that talks about life and how childhood is so precious. And although you can't read this here, it's a, a girl lying in the summer fields and there's butterflies and how it goes so quickly, our innocence and the youthfulness. There, there's a lot of meaning in this painting. And this is also on display in the central galleries um, where the Bellini is and the Franz Hall is. And my third research talk at the Burrell is coming up on this painting, Mathis Maris's Butterflies in the second last week of August on Wednesday the 23rd at 12 o'clock. So I thought it would be a good chance to tell everyone that it's in the Borough Collection, it's on this piece. I've done quite a bit of research on this piece. And this is a, a stunning painting. And I know that Mathis Maris is an acquired taste because I, I sent a WhatsApp a picture to my brother of one of the pictures he's done of one called The Dreamer. And my brother wrote back, he's like, haunted. It's like, <laughs> it's like this, this lady's haunted. <laughs> so I think that Maris was inspired by the Pre-Raphaelites and English literature, and he did all these incredible um, paintings inspired by all that. And he got a lot of um, stick in his day, and not many people appreciated him and gave him a hard time and didn't understood his vision. And I think the reason was because, because of the way he painted. And I think we have to remember that he stuck true to his vision, and he painted what he believed in. So I would say if you, the first time I encountered, I'm more of a Rembrandt kind of girl, but I appreciate Maris and I have a, a lot of respect for him. So if you see one of his paintings and you don't understand it, give it another look or maybe look at one of his other works. We have a few other pieces of Maris on display at the borough. So we have Girls Reading, we have The Dreamer. There's another really important piece called The Grief um, that's on display in the Death Gallery in the Borough Collection. And that's an incredible painting too. It deserves a second look. Okay, so um, this is, if you did, um, I can go on and on and on about Dutch art because I've done a lot of reading on it and I'm still trying to narrow down my focus for my research next year for my dissertation. So I'm in a few minds about it, about what I like. But if you also liked it or wanted to know more or anything I've discussed today, you can go on our Collections Navigator at Glasgow Museum's website. And if you did a search for Dutch art, this is what would come up. So there are 1,243 results. Um, 876 are objects and they come under these categories. The reason why I've put that there is because there is a way to search for things. You don't need specifics. You can do a general search on the Collections Navigator and then you can narrow it down through different schools. There are headings, there are objects, but this is just a brief thing that this is what would come up if you did a search for a general one. It's a good way to start on, on our website, the Glasgow Museums. We have a substantial holding, holding of Dutch and Flemish art. So if you ever wanted to look for it and this comes up, I can kind of give you guys a hand how to nor narrow things down and stuff. So that's just there for that. Thank you. Um, this is another still life I've put on and uh, silver gilt goblet and bowl of fruit. There are a lot of, the reason why I've put that there is because I really like still life and it was very hard to choose one. 
you can't appreciate still life like this, but if you went to Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museums, um, there's a lot of still life on display in the Dutch gallery upstairs. And this is one of them. And you'll see a lot of that in Dutch art, which is fancy, sparkly goblets and fruits and vegetables. And like it says here, that it's because um, the golden age, because of the Dutch East India Company, there was a lot of money and goods flowing through Amsterdam at the time, uh, the Netherlands. And this was common practice to take, you know, fancy pictures, make paintings, it sh paintings of still life and things. This showed status and it showed interest and wealth and position. When I started liking Dutch still life, it was because I loved food. It wasn't because of fancy things or anything else. It was because I loved table decorating and sparkly, shiny things. And that's all. And then I, the more I read up on it, I was like, oh, it has a meaning. It's, it's not just aesthetics. So if you like Dutch still life, um, or if you like fruits and vegetables or, you know, items that you want to see what a 17th century table spread is like, please go to the Kelvin Grove um, Art Gallery and look at the paintings there. They're incredible. I cannot tell you how many times I've taken inspiration from them and came home and done my table for a party. <laughs> but that's just me. Um, so this painting I've put here because although this is not a Van de Velde painting, when we think of Dutch art, we also sometimes think of marine paintings and we think of ships and the sea. And I love all that because one of my very closest um, uncles and a few other people in the family were in the Navy and I grew up near the sea. And I've spent quite a bit of time on boats back home. And I've always been very fond, think Moana. And <laughs> but the, the reason why I've picked this painting, not a Van de Velde painting is because a lot of people ask me why Dutch art? Why Dutch art? Why not Islamic art or other types of art? I think I love European art, specifically Dutch art because there was a painting I saw when I was young at Kelvin Grove um, Museum. It's called the Andracht. It's a painting of a ship and it's um, a Van de Velde painting. I fell in love with that painting as a child. And because people don't understand, you associate memories with certain things. A lot of my very happy memories are on boats and we had to go to my papa that lived in, uh, worked in the Navy, he was a lieutenant, and we had to cross this little water thing in the Navy boats to get to their house and back each time we went. A lot of my happiest memories of my grandmother and my family members um, when I was a child was me, them trying to put me in the boat and us crossing and back. To me, ships means family and happiness and good times and my childhood in Karachi, which I'll never get back the times that I spent there. So when I think of boats, when I saw that painting, that painting, I've not put it here because um, this painting has another meaning, a more important meaning. That's a small painting, the one I fell in love with as a child. It's still on display. It's a Van de Velde painting. Um, but like I said, to me, this subject matter has a very specific meaning and memories attached to it. And then when I went to the Rijksmuseum and saw all the other paintings, I was like, what? There's a whole, of course, now that I've read up more on it, it has other meanings. Um, they were used for slavery and other things, and there's a whole load of it. But when we're children, we don't know these things. So. That's one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan of the Van der Velde paintings. But this painting I've put here because, um, like it says here, it's on the Kelvin Grove stairs. It's a massive painting. And if you ever go to Kelvin Grove, please have a look at it. Once you've looked at the Dutch gallery and my favorite painting, the Andracht, have a look at this one. It is absolutely monumental. And I have never gone to that set of stairs and not looked at that painting. And, just been taken aback by it. You know, some things are so beautiful and so overwhelming, you cannot help but be taken by them. 
This is one of those paintings you will be taken by. Although it's not a Van der Velde painting, as, as I said, this is a very uh, typical Dutch marine painting, and these are the details of it. I won't get into the visual or analysis of it, but if you go to Kelvin Grove, go to the bit, the first floor stairs where this is, have a look at it, and think of me, uh, and then look up what the meaning of that painting is on the Collections Navigator on your phone, this is a beautiful painting and to paint the sea and the ships and the detailing of the painting, you'll know what I mean by that it's incredible. Okay, so uh, a very big thank you well and thank you. Um, I won't embarrass myself with my Dutch, which is very bad. <laughs> um, but there's some more further information on Dutch art that you guys can um, look up yourself. Our curator of Dutch art is Pippa uh, Stevenson. She's really lovely. She's the curator of European arts. And if you guys had any questions or wanted to know more things, she would be the person to contact or even to look her up on Google. Um, she's written a lot of books and things and published quite a bit. So her things are available to buy from our shops. Um, I also regularly refer to the Rijks Museum website, the Rijks Studio. It's really good, the images, you can copy images, there's no copyright. There's a lot of good information on it, very easy to understand. Um, Code Art is another website that I refer to for lots of things. It has details of all the curators and all the people. If you wanted to find anyone, and get in touch with them. It also tells you about events that are happening and other things. Um, there's the Leiden collection, the Frick um, collection, and that's my Twitter handle, and my LinkedIn is my name as well. There's tons of places where you can find out more about Dutch art, but these are just some of them. I'm still learning and I'm in the process, so um, next year is my dissertation at Cambridge, and I'm still trying to figure out what to do my dissertation on because I love the 19th century Higgs Kill paintings. I also love the Golden Age, the 17th century, and I also want to decolonize Dutch art and look at Dutch art from the per as a perspective of a person of color. One thing I want to change is I want everyone to love Western art, not just white people or not just a specific type of people. I think we should be allowed to love whatever we want. And I think it's important that narratives are changed and other narratives are explored and other points of view it is quite possible that something that people have always studied, the Golden Dutch Age, uh, the, the Dutch Age, the Golden Age, in a specific way, that that could also be looked at from another point of view, that it, there, it also caused a lot of harm. And there was also other people that had issues from it. They didn't benefit from it. It wasn't just all glory and gold and perfect for everyone. There was things, other things going on. But that's okay, we can still love the art and the work that was created because it was very special. As long as it's acknowledged and all the narratives are taken into place. So that's just some information. And there's one bonus slide I've added. Um, yes, it's not very well, but so I was very, very lucky to attend the Vermeer. So there was, um, it finishes on the 4th of June, the Vermeer exhibition. And I was incredibly honored to, I, I couldn't get tickets, but there was a textile symposium on and I bought the tickets for the textile symposium and I attended the textile symposium and that private delegation, they took them to see the Vermeer in the evening. That's the only reason I took that holiday and attended that textile symposium. The reason why I've put this here is that if it's a, this was a, this is a once in a lifetime exhibition as a Dutch art historian, in my lifetime, 28 Vermeers will never get together in one room, in one space. People don't give them out on loan and lend them. So to be able to see that, I, I prayed so hard, I cannot tell you. Um, so I was very grateful to have attended it. I have loads of original pictures of the Vermeer. If anybody wanted them, I'm happy to WhatsApp them to them or email it to them. It was incredible attending that and seeing that. And if you also wanted to go but missed out on the exhibition, the reason I've put these here is so to tell you that if there's ever a symposium on at the Rijksmuseum, you know, look at the fine print, because it might say underneath that that symposium's delegation 
might get access to the private exhibition or the temporary exhibition. And that's something I didn't know. And sometimes that could be missed. So that's one thing I thought that I'll share with everyone that if there's a once in a lifetime exhibition on and everything's sold out, they happen to have a delegation, a, a symposium on something you might not even like. Just attend it <laughs> because that's how I managed to get into the Vermeer and it was worth every penny. And I also bought the book. So there's a Thames and Hudson book of Vermeer and the English version on their website, if you wanted to buy it, is 50 quid. Uh, but on the, the promo thing, if you wrote Welcome 20, you'd get 20% off and then you can buy it too. So I just thought this is good information I must share. Uh, <laughs> And also Vermeer is incredible. I've spent some time in Delft and um, he painted women so beautifully and there's so much symbolism and there's in every aspect of Dutch art, I found something to love. And the fact that I have so many memories in the Netherlands helps in different cities, but we have old master paintings like Vermeer, we have um, women painters who did incredible flower paintings, like the whole tulip mania thing that I'm trying to study right now. But this was my little presentation on Dutch art. And I hope that I just wanted to say hello. And I'm someone that works at the Borough Collection. So if you guys also like these type of things, please add me on LinkedIn or say hello or be in touch. I want to have as many museum friends as possible. I'm new in the world of museums. This is only my first year and um, it's just, it's just nice to, to meet people and talk about something I love and I'm still discovering. So thank you.